Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Everton show. It's something of a celebration this week and why not? Everton Football Club are the 2017 Premier League 2 champions. A hard earned point at Chelsea last Friday, followed by Manchester City's inability to win on the following Monday, formally confirmed Everton's status as the best under-23 team in the country. It's a title that is thoroughly deserved and I'm delighted that the team's captain, John Joe Kenny, has joined myself and Graeme Stewart this week. Thanks for joining us, John Joe. How does it feel to be Premier League 2 champions? Yeah, it's great. I think um, you know it's been a long season, but at the end, you know, you win a trophy. So I think the lads deserve it, and all the lads are made up. Yeah, thoroughly deserved, Graham. Very much so. Yeah, I've seen a lot of the under 23s this season, Darren, and they've been absolutely outstanding. Always working hard, always organised, and they've really deserved what they've got today. Great set of lads off the pitch as well. We'll hear plenty more from John Joe Kenny on this week's show. We'll get Diamond's views on it all as well. And I can tell you that he was as pleased as anyone when Everton under-23s won the league. And we'll also have a little bit of time for these bits and pieces as well. I'm buzzing like I've never been before. It, and it, it is, it, it gets you uh, in a different way on this side of the fence. But at the same time, it means, you know, more. You know, I've read different articles. I've no um, fear of you know, coming back the same, you know, none of that nonsense, I know I'll be back. Yeah, that, man, that's the fate of a goalkeeper, you play or you don't play, so there's no between, uh, so, you know, that's why it's good to be back. They would say, like, they put always in my, uh, not uh, at the end of the year, you know, they always write something, they always say, uh, a very, very good capacity, but need to be a bit more concentrated. <laughs> yeah, I got told off, my uh, little girl told me to my toes weren't pointy enough and my legs were a bit bent, so... Still got a little bit of work in the garden to, to perfect the cartwheel, but it was just nice to mix it up. Diamond, there's no better feeling is there to be crowned champions. You are the best team in the country. Yeah, very much so. And as John Joe touched on earlier, you know, they've worked hard for it. You know, they're, they're delighted. We're all delighted for them. Um, Unzi and Ebo have done terrifically well coaching these boys. They're well-mannered lads as well, which is an extra bonus as well, because as much as, you know, we want to see them play f lovely football and, and winning football, you know, they're off the pitch, they're really good lads, courteous, always got a smile on their faces and, and you know, Unzi and Evo deserve an awful lot of credit as much as the lads. Like yourself, they're good ambassadors for the football club, aren't they? What did you do on Monday when uh, Liverpool's win against Manchester City confirmed us as the champions? It was just a normal Monday, really. You know, I was obviously seeing it on the, the Twitter and that, just checking up on the scores, but I didn't really want to watch it too much. But when I found out that, you know, it was 3-2, you know, I was over the moon. It was a relief, wasn't it, to get it done and dusted before the last game of the season? Yeah, as you say, but you know, going to the last game of the season, knowing you've got to get a point or a win, you know, can be a little bit nervous at the time. So to know it's over now, it's a, it's a good feeling, yeah. We've shown the under 23s all through the season on the Everton show, and there's been some terrific goals along the way. Yeah, plenty of goals, plenty of good performances as well. Um, I think the thing that's stood out for me is that you watch under 23 football sometimes, and it can be a little bit passive but not our lads, and that's why I think we're the champions. Not only have we got some terrific players, a really good team spirit, but we played the game in the right way. David always gets them playing at a good tempo, doesn't he, John? You know, he's, he's always making sure that, uh, you know, they're on their toes, not afraid to tell them if it's not going quite right as well. I'm sure there's been a few half-time roastings <laughs> along the way, John Joe, but uh, no, it's, it's been all in all a terrific season. A long one, as John Joe mentioned, but your reward's there now. The 4-1 win against Tottenham at Goodison was a bit of a slow burner. Not the best first half. Did Unzi have a little bit of a go at half time? Yeah, uh, not really. It was more of just because we know we're a good team and you know we know we knew we had another gear left in us. I think, and then the second half, I think it showed. I think that's when you know all the lads turned up second half and I think comfortably won the game. And the team spirit looks fantastic. You all get on very well. Yeah, the lads are all close. You know, we go out for meals as teams and you know we do things as teams. So you know that's why at the end of the day we, we win the league and it helps a lot. You can see that bonding, can't you, Graham? Yeah, you can. I mean, it's great. I mean, the lads have played an awful lot of football together. 
you know, spending a lot of time off the pitch together as well. And that camaraderie is what you need if you've got to dig deep in the last 10 minutes of a game to see it through. I mean, that Chelsea game was a perfect example. You know, we went 1-0 down against the runner play, undeserved, but the lads dug deep, came back into it, went 2-1 up, you know, and it, it, it was a really good, solid performance. And, and when you've got camaraderie on the pitch like that, you know, that's when you know your mate next door to you is looking after you. And in the end, that point was sufficient, wasn't it, to secure the title? Well, as we've said, Everton under-23s have been blazing a trail ever since the season started back in August. We've covered their progress regularly here on the Everton Show, and we've enjoyed bringing you some terrific goals along the way. Here's how Unzi and the boys won Premier League 2. <laughs> Well, there were some goals missing from that last video, two in particular. They both came when the under-23s travelled to the home of National League Aldershot last Friday to take on Chelsea. The Toffees knew that a win would secure the Premier League 2 title and that a point would make it very difficult for Manchester City to catch us. The lads were superb on the night and although they deserved to get the win they craved, they had to settle for a draw. Nice little flick by O'Brothers, picked up by Mason Mount and he is quick. Mason Mount charging forward for Chelsea. Tries to slide it through, Ugbo is onside, and it's 1-0 Chelsea. Suspicions of offside, but the first time that Chelsea have had a foray into Everton territory, and the ball takes a deflection and ends up in the back of the net, and Chelsea lead by one goal to nil. Harry Charles, now they're two Harry, on two. Harry Charlesley, Basala Sambu, is through on goal. Is this the moment? Basala Sambu, oh, yes, straight to the keeper. Is. Harry yeah. follows through and scores the equaliser. Basala Sambu, and he deserves that for sheer persistence. And the Toffees are back in the game, and it's one apiece. John Joe Kenny again, this time it's on the ground, and it's there, yes, it's 2-1! Yeah. Leon Walsh has scored the goal that might well win the league for Everton. Ooh. He throws himself to the ground. It's all about the delivery from John Joe Kenny on the right-hand side. It was a pinch of a cross from the right-hand side. Down there's Ugbo, Chelsea just asking a few questions. Edge of the penalty area, no. Ugbo! Oh, no. He was given too much space, and he's drilled the ball into the corner of the net. It's his second goal. We said we were a long way from home, and David Unsworth and John Eberle will be very, very displeased at how easy that was. Liam Walsh, it's deep towards the back stick. Oh, oh it's a fantastic save! save. Oh, it's an unbelievable word. save. It was John Joe Kenny who cannot believe it. John Joe, what a night for the Chelsea under-23s keeper to have the game of his life right at the death. Corner kick, your header, I thought that was in. I thought that was the goal that would win us the league. Yeah, I felt like that myself. I thought when I've seen it, I thought I've scored, do you know what I mean? I'm ready to celebrate. But you know, obviously in a video it was a great save, so you have to you know, we got the points and as long as we didn't lose it was a good result in the night. Played well the keeper, didn't he? Yeah, he had a bit of blinder, didn't he? <laughs> we enjoyed the game, Graham, didn't we? We were down there at Aldershot. Yeah, it's a terrific game of football. Two really good sides. You know, Chelsea sides are always well organised. Some good young players in their team as well that have played in the FA Youth Cup final against City a few days beforehand, so they didn't take the game against us lightly whatsoever. Um, and in some ways that probably inspired the boys a, 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 a little bit more. Um, they were excellent on the night, John Joe and the lads, they really, really were. They set about the game really well, like a side that wanted to win the title, put Chelsea on the back foot straight away and then obviously they, they get a breakaway goal, which can happen. The character the lads showed to get back into the game was terrific. And just remind us who you made man of the match. Don't want to make you blush here, John Joe, but uh, no, certainly that second half. I mean, we said it straight away on commentary. There seemed to be so much si uh, room on that side, didn't there? And we kept getting that switch out to the right hand side. And this man, I was tired watching him but bombing up and down that right hand side. It was a tireless performance from John Joe. Great bit of quality for the cross for Walsh's goal. And very, very unfortunate to not get the header as well. That would have been the icing on the cake. Is crossing the ball from wide position something you've been working on? 
Yeah, well, as a fullback, you know, as uh, the modern game now, you got to get forward and put crosses in. So, you know, you, you practice that and, you know, hopefully it comes off in games. Some of his delivery was excellent, wasn't it? It was, yeah. And as, as John Joe says there, you know, you've got to work hard on your crossing and your, your final ball. It's the most difficult thing in the game, finishing and the final ball. You can have so much good approach work, but if your final ball isn't good, you know, you're struggling. But the other night it was top draw. It was a great game and as we say it was the point that won the league and that's just about it for part one of this week's programme. We'll take a quick breather and when we come back we'll bring you some more title winning reaction from some of John Joe's teammates and we'll also hear from the man who returned to the first team fold last weekend, Martin Stecklenberg. Join us at 7pm every Thursday night for our weekly football show Across the Park. Welcome back. We've been looking back at the under-23's incredible Premier League 2 title win so far this week, but we've got to part two of the show and we still haven't heard from the manager. Here's what a delighted David Unsworth made of his side finishing top of the pile. Very proud, relieved, I have to say, relieved. But the, the lads this morning, um, you know, just to see the smile on their faces, they're, they're, they're absolutely buzzing and um, I'm very happy for them. Very proud of them, very proud of the staff as well. Um, John Eberle's been an outstanding assistant this year. Uh, he's been brilliant um, and, you know, great credit goes to him uh, as well. So um, just, just, a, just a very proud Evertonian this morning. You mentioned the, the team ethic and the attitude of this group on a number of occasions this season, but is, is this a just reward for all their efforts? Yeah, not just not just their effort, not just the spirit, but the the skill and talent as well. Uh, we can't, you know, we can't ignore that. The, um, you know, some of the performances have been outstanding. Uh, we've been consistently very, very good, uh, which which is the most which pleases me the most that we have a real consistency level. Doesn't matter who plays, uh, the consistency level has been there all season and. Um, I'm just very, very proud of the lads this morning. You've had some fantastic moments in football so far, but where does this rank in terms of achievements? Yeah, it's right up there. I have to say, you know, I've, I'm, I'm buzzing like I've never been before. It, and it, it is, it, it gets you uh, in a different way on this side of the fence. But at the same time, it means, you know, more probably than, than anything else. So um, I'm, I'm just so happy for the for the young players. And um, they've had a great season. Uh, we've we've been able to get some in in the first team as well. We've been able to get some out on loan and it's never weakened our team and uh, it's great credit to all the lads you know, who have, who have played the part from, from start to finish. Uh, the senior boys who have dropped down and, and, and showed a great attitude and, and have helped the boys in, in one or two games um, and, and contributed. So it, it's, it's very much a team, a team effort um, and you know, I stand here a very, very proud man. OK, John Joe, tell us about the gaffer. What's it like working with Dave Unsworth? Um, he's been brilliant, I think, for all the lads. I think, um, you know, he's been, uh, been having us now for a couple of years and he's, um, he's just brought a lot of lads on, I think, off the ball and on the ball. And, you know, you can see in the games now that the lads are not just playing, we're winning. We find that we need to win sometimes, not about just, um, you know, playing well, we want to win now as well. He's so enthusiastic as well, isn't he? Yeah. You know, he's been, as I say, he's been brilliant for everyone. I think um, even around the academy and he's just great to have around, yeah. We had a little glass of champagne with Unzi and the staff earlier this week, Graham, and the, the bond between the staff is terrific and, and Unzi leads from the front in that respect. He does. What, in the drinking or the manager? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was, he's been terrific. And as you said, the key word is his enthusiasm for the game and, and the fact that I know for a fact he's, how proud he is of, of the lads. You know, that comes across in leaps and bounds. I mean, you can see it, can't you? Um, but to go out every day on the pitch and try and improve the young players and then to see it come to fruition with a title must give David and John Embro a huge buzz as much as it does the players. And as he said, it's not in quite the same way as a, as, uh, as a player. Mm. In some ways, it, you know, it's like having your own kids, isn't it? You know, you see him come through and, and win a title. It, it must be a wonderful feeling. And uh, yeah, we celebrated for you, John Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Very quickly while we've got you here, what was it like playing for the first team at your debut at Goodison Park? It was a dream come through, obviously. You know, you've been at, at Everton since a young age and that's what you're aimed for, you know. I want to get to the first team and when that uh, time come, I was over the moon and just to get me chance, it was, it was a great feeling for me. He'll get more chances as well, won't he? Yes, I hope so. I mean, that's what the lads have got to do now. They've got to go and enjoy the moment, 
Let's go and enjoy the derby as well. Make sure we put one over on the Reds as well. But go away, enjoy your summer, and then come back ready to go again. That's the most important thing. We're all looking forward to the mini derby in a couple of weeks. Well, John Joe has said his piece, and so has Unzi. Now let's hear from some of the other under-23 players who have done so much to bring the Premier League 2 title back to Goodison. Buzzing for it because it's, it's a big thing in our careers. You know, every, every team in the league wants to win the league, and I'm happy that we can do it. When's been your favourite moment this season so far, would you say? Um, probably, probably say the game at Goodison, you know, against Southampton when, when we had a big crowd there, you know, we had to perform and all oh, the lads done well and we got the win that we needed. Now, everyone was watching it in all different places. Some people went the game, I watched it with my mate and um, we all found out at the same time we were all buzzing, texting each other. Everyone came in uh, feeling brilliant because obviously it's such a big achievement and we're also happy we've won it and that we get a guard of honour against Liverpool. It's going to be a great game. It's been a great season for me and the team, but for me to, to come in on my first full season and win the league is unbelievable. How good have uh, Unzi and Jared been with you this season? Yeah, great. They, they both helped me loads and helped me improve as a player and stuff like that. So. I come back in the side, the later stages, like the running basically, and um, I'd like to think I, I played my part and up the side, and um, we're just all delighted to win to win the league, what we deserve really. I'm going to use it to hopefully just kick on next year, and hopefully we'll do the same next year, and just keep moving forward as a team, because we're a good group. If you had to pick out any highlights, John Joe, from the season, I suppose the Southampton game will be right up there because, as Walsh you said, there was a big crowd and especially in the first half hour or so, the boys were, were outstanding. Yeah, as you say, there was a big crowd and I think the crowd helped. I think, you know, the lads knew that, you know, everyone was there to watch and, you know, when you're playing at Southport and there's not many people there, it's, it's tough to get going, but, you know, when there's a crowd there, I think, you know, you can see it up the lads a lot, yeah. It's much better playing at Goodison than, than Southport, with all due respect to Southport, isn't it? Yeah, of course, you know, the, the grass is better, the, the pitch is nicer and you know what's going on really with South, Southport, you know, all right, we've won a few games there, but, you know, it's tough to get the ball down and play, so I think it's a lot better playing at Goodson. And as you say, it's down to the boys now, it's up to them to push on and not be a part of the second team, if you like, next season. Well, no, in an ideal world, you, you, you go away, as I said, enjoy the moment, always enjoy winning because it's difficult to win titles, it's difficult to win cups, so enjoy it. But come away and have a look at it and think, hang on, we've got a manager here at the football club who's prepared to play young players. So Tom's probably been a standout example of that. He's the one who's made it stick this season. Who's to say, John Joe, anybody else can't make it stick next season? The opportunity is there. It could be a terrific occasion, couldn't it, against Liverpool at Goodison? We hope so, game. yeah. I mean, we'd love everybody to get down there, uh, uh, down to Goodison, because these lads, you know, they really deserve a big crowd and it's a showpiece game for them. I'd like to think we got the trophy on parade as well. Guard of honour would be nice as well, potentially. <laughs> but, uh, no, it's, I mean, it's great for the lads. It's going to be a big crowd anyway. It'll be bigger than the crowd against Southampton. And it's a wonderful way for the lads to be able to sign off. And once the Premier League two season finishes, you've got some international football to play before you can start to relax and enjoy your summer. Yeah, you have the, um, the World Cup with England. You know, hopefully you get the pick for that and then go away there and then you know, enjoy me some of them as uh, Diamond said, they're come back in pre-season and you know, have a right go. The World Cup's in Japan, isn't it, for the under-20s? Uh, Japan and South Korea, I think, yeah. And there's other Everton players alongside you, hopefully. Yeah, there's a few players in the mix. Oh, you know, it's good to have a few of the lads in there and you know, represent Everton. You could have four or five Everton players in the England under-20 World Cup squad, Diamond, which I think is fabulous. A absolutely, deservedly so as well, because they've all you know, been outstanding seasons and you should get that recognition at international level, and the boys will do that, I'm sure. Long way to go after mm. a difficult season, but uh, you know, you put that England shirt on, that you make sure uh, you know, your heart pound, no doubt about it. So if they can have a successful World Cup campaign, that'll just be the uh, icing on the cake to an already wonderful season. Got a chance, England, as well. Yeah, definitely, of course. I mean, these young boys, have, uh, they'll wear the shirt with pride and go out and give it everything they possibly can, and it'll be a great little double, Premier League 2 and a World <laughs> Cup. <laughs> Long journey. You okay flying? You don't mind flying? Yeah, I'm used to it now. I've been uh, been in South Korea as well, but you know it, it doesn't get any easier. But you know it's all right. We'll get we'll get there and we'll do well. We wish you well. Time to turn our attentions now to first team matters. We'll discuss this weekend's visit of Premier League leaders Chelsea later in the show. But first, a quick look back at our first ever trip to the London Olympic Stadium. 
A totally forgettable football match it may have been, but it was a notable day for one man in particular. Martin Stecklenberg had very little to do in the capital city, but having last played in December, he said it was very pleasing to be back between the sticks. Yes, it is. Uh, it's been a while, I think four months. So, yeah, it's always good to be back. How difficult is it, Martin, when, even though you're an experienced international goalkeeper, when you are out of the side for four months, how difficult is it to come back in and be on your toes straight from the first whistle? Yeah, no, I, I'm a little bit older now, so you know, I have a little bit more experience. So, you know, basically it's just keep on training, try to reboot, you know, the, the game itself and, and try to train as good as possible. And hopefully a chance will come, and it was today was for me. Because you can't really slot in anywhere else, can you? You're either in the team or you're not. Yeah, that, that's the fate of a goalkeeper. You play or you don't play, so there's no between. Uh, so, you know, that's a, it's good to be back. It wasn't the best game against West Ham, far from it, but I don't think the, I don't think the Olympic Stadium helps the atmosphere, do you? Yeah, it's a big stadium. Uh, you see the stands are a bit far apart, so mm. I think it was tough to get the atmosphere going in there, yeah. It's, it's just not a football stadium for me, Graham. No, I think that you cover it really well there, Daz. It's just not a football stadium. It is what it is. It's an Olympic stadium. Anything else, concerts, athletics, mm. no problem whatsoever. Fantastic facilities, but not for football. It felt soulless. And we weren't, I'm not the only person saying that. There's a lot of people we spoke to on the day who all said exactly the same sort of thing. Very, very difficult, as John Joe mentioned there, to you know, whip up an atmosphere. I'm not so sure if that, uh, West Ham fans would be happy going there week in, week out after the experiences of being in uh, you know, the Upton Park. That was a proper ground mm. to go and play at. That was atmospheric. I think uh, it's not for me. Really not for me. It was a total afternoon to forget, that's for sure. We're taking another break right now, and in part three we will speak exclusively to Seamus Coleman, but we won't be hearing any more from John Joe Kenny. He's got a busy few days ahead of him, so we're going to let him go. My thanks to John Joe. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to part three of this week's Everton show. John Joe Kenny has left us diamond, but I enjoyed his company. He did smash in there, didn't he? Yeah, he did great. You know, he's, uh, I dare say he does, he's done some TV work before, but, um, you know, it's not easy sometimes to sit in front of the cameras, but he was, uh, I thought he was brilliant, but now he's not here, we can talk about it. <laughs> he's been very impressive, hasn't he? He has, yeah. I mean, he's experienced at that level now, John Joe. You know, and obviously we don't, didn't say too much about the international side of it, but he's been around the England scene for an awful long time as well. Mm. So he's, he'll probably be scratching his head a little bit and wondering where, where his opportunity is going to come from because I think the only reason he's not been playing is because Mason Holgate's had such a good season. So the, the choice has been to put Mason at right mm. back whilst, um, whilst Seamus has obviously been out. But, you know, he, he's going to go away and he'll have, go to the World Cup, hopefully have a really good World Cup, get some rest under his belt and then come back really determined to make a push, because I think it's a big season for him next year. You can tell why Unzi has him as his captain, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, he's a local lad. You know, he's got that drive, he's got the ambition, he's got desire, e everything that David wants from, from his side. You know, somebody with a great character about him, and uh, he really was outstanding against Chelsea when it really mattered. He's a real level-headed boy, isn't he? There's no ways and graces with John Joe. Yeah, really like him. He's a, he's a nice lad, as, as they all are. Mm. You know, we see him up at the training ground and they're always courteous, they're always like handshake and how are you? You know, they're a credit to themselves and the, and the football club as a whole. Unzi wouldn't have it any other way, would he? Now, the injury to Seamus Coleman affected everyone at Everton Football Club, such as the popularity of the boy, that the club took delivery of a deluge of get-well cards and messages in the wake of that dreadful double leg break. Well, it's terrific to say that Seamus is back. He returned to USM Finch Farm on Monday morning, and after expressing my delight at seeing him, I escorted him to an exclusive Everton show interview. Seamus, fantastic to see you back at Finch Farm. I know you started your rehab back in Ireland, and psychologically it must have helped to be amongst family and friends for a bit. Yeah, massively. Um, I think that was that was a big part. I think I had probably had, you know, the first couple of days where I was a bit low and, you know, coming to terms with the injury. And since then, really, to be honest, everything's been quite positive. I got to go home and spend time with my family <coughs> and my friends and stuff that I probably haven't got the chance to do in, you know, maybe eight, nine years. So it was good and uh, got my head around the injury. and. I was just ready to come back as well, ready to come back and start. Must have been tough for your family. I know you're from a very close-knit family, close-knit community. So when 
one of your own gets injured, yeah. it must affect a lot of people. Yeah, it did. Look, my family were, were obviously gutted, and like myself, and obviously the people of, of my hometown are great. Um, you know, they, they rally behind you and they support me all the way. So when an injury like this happens, um, you know, it, it does hit them, but uh, you just got to get on with it now. I know the support that I'll have from my family, the support I already have had from, you know, my brothers and uh, my wife has been great. And my mum and dad and uh, my wife's mum and dad as well, they've, they've been great. I've, I've been sitting on the couch getting uh, <laughs> tended to the, the whole time. So um, it's been great. And... It was good to go home, but that support will definitely get me through. Gets you out of nappy changing for a while, I suppose, doesn't you it? You said that. I haven't changed a nappy in a month, and I'm, I'm missing it, to be honest. <laughs> the tempting question, Seamus, is to say, did you know it was a bad one straight away? Yeah. But I suppose you were in shock for a little bit, were you? No, I knew, I knew straight away. I knew, um, I knew instantly uh, that it happened. I never broke a bone in my life, but you just know. And I suppose uh, the, initial, the initial thought was just to, to hold it and, and make sure that like you know, no one tried to maybe lift you up and say, let's take a quick free kick or something, because you never know what what, what, what uh, mindset the other players are in. So it was just a case of trying to stay calm and and looking after it till the doctor came on. And when the doctor came on, I told him, obviously I said, he, it's broken. I think he probably must have known as well. So I told him and, and once I kind of knew they had it under control, I think the, the pain kind of hit me then. But um, Have you watched it back? I've watched it back. I've watched it all back, I think. Psychologically, there's some players that, that don't want to, but I think it's best just getting out of the way. I've seen it back. I've um, I've seen the pictures, all the rest. Mm -hmm. So now it's it's fine. I've you know I've got over all that, and obviously it wasn't nice, but look, it happens. You're a naturally positive guy. You're back at Finch Farm now. There is a long journey ahead of you, but it's got to start somewhere. Exactly, yeah. and you know it started it started the day the operation was done for me once. Once the operation was done and uh, everything went well, and as I said, with the support of, of my family and, and the people back home, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be tough at times, but you know, that, that, that'll get me through. And uh, in a way, looking forward to the challenge. Um, you know, it's not been smooth for me to get where I've got, so this is another little challenge. And you know, you have good days and bad, but you know, still got the best job in the world and you have to take a positive out of it. As well as the support you've had from the Everton family, I know full well the Irish family as well have rallied round. It must be must be bizarre for your mum and dad's neighbours to have these stream of celebrity visitors rocking up. Yeah, it was. Look, uh, I've, I've been it's been great for me the two managers to to you know I, I put I put a shift in for them whenever I play and for them to go to the effort to come see me. You know, Martin O'Neill came from from London to see me, uh, had a cup of tea and a chat, and it was great and. Literally just come over, come come over to see me, which is great. And then obviously the boss and and Jags and Matt and Jan came over to see me, which was great as well. And I just you know, just giving back that little bit. So it was it was nice. It was nice. What can you do now, Shane? Are you going to do a lot of pool work, for example, upper body stuff? Yeah, I've, I've been in the gym yesterday, done some upper bodies and some exercises in the gym on my leg. And I went to the pool then, some run aqua jogging in the pool and. So I'm walking up and down just to get the movements back and um, there'll be a lot of treatment as well to help the swelling and, and whatnot. But the pain's gone, so that's that's a massive bonus. You know, I don't have any pain anymore. So, so as I said, I'm quite upbeat at the minute. You are upbeat, you are positive. Are you patient? Uh, th I, think that'll be, I think that'll be the hard bit. Um, I've, I've said that. I've no, you know, I've read different articles. I've no... Um, fear of you know coming back the same place you know none of that nonsense i know i'll be back and uh, i'll not be afraid of your first tackle or you know none of that that's not that's not been a problem for me psychologically but i think the time the time will be the one but you just got to break it down into some into months and and do what you can but the time is something that you know will be tough for me because you're used to playing every week and uh used to training every day but you know it's part and parcel of it and you just got to get on with it you're looking forward to going back to goodison park again yeah, I am. Uh, I prefer to be going back with my bits on. But no, I'm looking forward to, to going to the game and see, seeing the lads and support the lads. I've been supporting them from home and things have been going well at the minute and a few of the lads are playing very well. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back, yeah. How great is it to see Seamus back at Finch Farm? It really is, Being yeah. so positive and with a smile on his face. Yeah, very much so. I mean, that's the thing for me coming across in that interview, how positive he is about everything. And that's an unbelievably important thing when you've got a major injury like that, to stay positive, to be focused and, you know, just generally be upbeat. And he looks like that.
The psychological side of it is just as important as the, the physicality. Yeah, it is difficult, and he touched on the time frame. That's, that's the hardest thing to overcome. You know, I was, I was lucky in my career in the fact that I only had re one really bad injury, and that was a cruise ship. And you know that's six months guaranteed out. And he's got the right mentality. You know, you take it month by month. And I mean, I know, I think I went through three months of rehab and then Charlton sent me away for a week, said to go on holiday for a week just to get out the building. You'll have totally <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't walk properly. <laughs> but um, no, he, and, and, and the, I'm sure the, the physios and everybody down at Finch Farm will, will be doing similar kind of things and say, look, you know, get to a point and then maybe just disappear for a few days. Mm. You know, just go away from it all and, and refocus, come back ready to push on again. But, you know, this is where the facilities at Finch Farm come into play as well. We've got a magnificent gym. You've got the uh, capability to get in the pool there as well, which is important. So we're fortunate to have wonderful facilities for Seamus to, you know, to be using. I thought it was interesting when he said he's watched it back, he's watched the tackle over and again, because I can't watch it. No, some people don't like doing things like that. But, um, you know, he felt that's something he wanted to do, get it out of the way. And, and fair play to him. Everybody's different. Everybody reacts in different ways. But, you know, you can see the drive and the passion in him. And, you know, he, he knows he's coming back. We all know he's coming back. He's got to be patient, hasn't he? And he's got to do as he's told. And I think, and I think he will do. Yeah, I think he will. I think when you've had a serious leg break like Seamus is, as much as the temptation is to push and push and, you know, that's the way he is as a, as a player, that's the way he is as a person. But sometimes the hardest thing is to just hold back. But mm -hmm. you've got to really listen to the, to the doctors and the physios in a, in a situation like this. I've met his mum and dad many times and his brothers as well. I know he's got a very supportive family around him here and back in Ireland. And that too will be, will be crucial. Yeah, especially in the first month or so. You know, it sounds a great thing to be laid on the couch, being waited on hand and foot, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure he's absolutely grateful to his family and his close friends and what have you, and he'd have enjoyed that. But, um, you know, getting back to Finch Farm, getting back to normality to his Everton family, I'm sure is a real big boost to him because that's normality for him. It happens in football. One man's misfortune is somebody else's opportunity, as we mentioned last week on the Everton show, and Mason Holgate's come in and he's done OK. He's done yeah. well. Mason's had a real look back on a really good season for him and it all started for him really back in the pre-season games where he obviously caught the eye of Ronald Koeman. Mm. He was impressed by what he'd seen and he's ne never really looked back. Not always been in the side, but he's always been in and around it on the, be on the substitute bench. He, uh, he's had a great experience, a really, really good, solid first season of, of first-team action on a, on a regular basis. So, you know, Seamus has got his hands full, getting mm. himself fit and getting back in the side because we've had John Joe on, yep. Mason has had a great season, so the right-back situation looks pretty decent. All three of those, you wouldn't mind who played, would you? They would, wouldn't look out of place. No, I mean, look, we, we know how good Seamus is, certainly going forward. John Joe's rock solid as a defender, but we get, again, you and me saw him on the Friday. Mm -hmm. That's as good as I've seen John Joe going forward. And Mason does a little bit of both, so we've got all bases covered. The right back position is well and truly covered. Right, it's time for our final break of this week's programme. Coming up in the fourth section, we'll hear from skipper Phil Jagielka, midfielder Morgan Schneiderlin, and we look ahead to Sunday afternoon's Premier League game at Goodison Park with Chelsea. <laughs> Welcome back to part four of this week's programme. Now, regular viewers of the Everton show will know that our first team players and the staff from Everton in the community are regularly spotted at schools across the Merseyside region, putting smiles on the faces of youngsters, no matter which team they support. This week, it was the turn of Morgan Schneiderlin to head to St Aloysius Catholic School in Heighton, that's Tony Hibbert's old school, by the way, to launch a new Premier League initiative called Primary Stars. It was very nice being able to put a smile on a kid's face, you know, is the best thing you can do and the least you can do as a football player, you know, we all were a kid, we all were in school, we were all looking at uh, players, you know, who were playing for a local team and we all wished that they would come to our school. Unfortunately, it's not all the time possible, but today, you know, I was very happy to have a bit of fun with them and to interact with them. And the community are delivering Premier League primary stars. It's about inspiring young people in their PE lessons, but in their classrooms as well, getting them excited for their future, opening up doors, showing the possibilities and building a more well-rounded young person and helping them through school with PE, with their other lessons that they learn. And I really think it helps raise the aspirations of the children. We come from an area where there is quite a bit of deprivation and the children have thoroughly enjoyed the programme. Since we started with the Premier League, we 
had our children's attendance has increased massively. It's about using the skills they learn in sport in all their other lessons. So if they find a math challenge and keep going with the like the resilience, resilience is massive in PA and sport, and that's what it's like we've been looking at in the Premier League, don't give up. We don't give up in PA, so why should we give up in any of the lessons? There's no reason why any school in the country shouldn't be getting onto that website, signing up straight away, contacting their local football clubs and their community departments and, and begging them to come in because the work that this programme does is unbelievable. In such a short space of time that we've been delivering it, the impact that we've seen and the changes in some of these people's lives, it's, it's a no-brainer. Everyone should be signing up for it. What were you like in school, Morgan? I was okay until I was uh, I was 14, 15 when I when I started, you know, to get really into my my brain, you know, was made to be a, a football player, and then I was just leaving for football uh, at this age. My parents always pushed me, you know, to to get the best result as possible at school because you don't know what can happen in your life. But my brain, you know, was made to be a football player. So if we went back to your old school now and spoke to your teachers about you, what would they say? What would they say about you? They would say, like they put always in my, um, not uh, at the end of the year, you know, they always write something. They always say, uh, I had very, very good capacity, but need to be a bit more concentrated. <laughs> Morgan enjoyed himself there, didn't he? Yeah, he certainly did. He's a really nice guy, Morgan. We know that anyway. So uh, it looks like he had a really good afternoon with the kids. He's probably one of the first names on the, the gaffer's team sheet, isn't he, at the moment? Definitely. Definitely. I think he's been a wonderful signing for us. Uh, and there's more to come from him. Mm. You know, this has been a, probably a, a settling in period more than anything for Morgan since he's come to the football club. Again, another person who can go away and have a good summer and come back ready to go again because I think he'll be a major part of our side next season. Great game to look forward to on Sunday, the visit of the Premier League leaders. Very much so, yeah. I mean, I think that that's, that's the games we all love because, you know, the, the, the atmosphere takes care of itself. Full house, potential champions coming mm. onto our doorstep. But we've got a good record against the top sides at Goodison. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I think it'll be a really tough game, no doubt about that but uh, a game that we can win and they'll be smart in the lads from the performance last week. They should go on and win the league now, shouldn't they, Chelsea? You would think so, yeah. I mean, Tottenham have been terrific and they've really pushed them close. They had a good win at Crystal Palace the other night as well. So they're, they're certainly hot on the hills of Chelsea, so they can't slip up. But I think, you know, Antonio Conte will be looking at this game and thinking, oh, if we can get through this one, mm. we've got a great chance because he'll know how difficult it is to come to Goodison Park. They've got quality all over the park, haven't they, Chelsea? Well, they have. Um, you know, they played a back three, you know, and, and they play, they've had players like, you know, Moses is the one for me. Mm. I mean, no one would have put him in a starting 11 on a regular basis, at, you know, throughout the season. But he's been there and he's just an example of some terrific players, workman like players that they've got. And obviously they've got the, you know, Mercurial Hazard, mm. who can win games on his own. Costa on his day is as good as there is in the Premier League as a centre forward. So, yeah, as you say, plenty of good players on that pitch on, on Sunday afternoon. And Diego Costa hadn't scored for a while, then he popped a couple in the other night. Yeah, of course. I mean, he'd, and he'd have been upset about not playing in the semi-final as well. Perhaps that had something to do with it. He'll certainly be one to watch. Now, after scoring for Everton at Villa Park on the 2nd of May 2015, Phil Jagielka had to wait until our visit to Manchester United on the 4th of April this year to grab his next goal. Almost two years. So what does he do? He then finds the net in three consecutive games. We asked the skipper about his great recent form, this weekend's opponents, and the secret to his newfound goal-scoring success. Uh, I'm not too sure, to be honest. Obviously, been sort of in the, the right place at the right time. Some, some good balls in the box and a little bit of luck there, a little bit of luck there. But it's, it's nice to have got, obviously, one goal, but three in sort of 10, 11 days was, was really nice. Are you still perfecting your goal celebration? Yeah, I got told off. My uh, little girl told me to my toes weren't pointy enough and my legs were a bit bent, so still got a little bit of work in the garden to, to perfect the cartwheel, but it was just nice to mix it up, but especially nice that we actually eventually won the game because it would have been a little bit embarrassing if we'd not. The managers really praised your attitude. How pleased are you to be back involved in things and scoring and, and helping secure victories? Yeah, it's always frustrating when you're, you're not part of the team, uh, especially when the team's doing well. You know, you want to be part of a successful team and when you're on the sidelines and you don't get to play too many minutes it is frustrating but you say with him giving me another chance a couple of injuries and things it's it's given me an opportunity to go and prove that I'm, I'm still capable of playing uh, at this level and to, to get a few goals is obviously a bit of an icing on the cake but even more so it's obviously the performances defensively that, that matters and we've had a, a pretty decent run obviously by the, the derby it's been a quite a decent month. 
I guess Everton don't want to be the best of the rest, do you? You want to be up there in the mix. Is that the focus for next season then? Yeah, definitely. We, we've obviously struggled in the league. We've had some good cup runs the last couple of seasons, but we've, we've not performed well enough in the leagues. But prior to that, you know, we were, we were competing and we're definitely seen as the best of the rest. And it was important to, first and foremost, get back to that point. But, you know, we, we know and we should be aiming for things higher. You know, bar probably about three or four uh, games this season, we've we've competed and had a chance to win most of them. So um, we are definitely, you know, moving forward. And like I say, a few more games left of this season, but it'll be important close season, and then get everyone back as as soon as we can for pre season, and I'm ready to to start the campaign. Chelsea look like they're on course to win the title. I suppose they've set the bar for for every team in that top six, seven, haven't they? Yeah, I think so, but you know, I think that's a, a little bit harsh on, on Spurs as well. I think where they've come from, and um, you know, it will be a difficult task for them to to push them all away. But I think you know, as far as team ethic and, and things like that go, you've got to you know give them a lot of a lot of credit, a lot of compliments. You know, with probably a bit smaller budget, they've gone out there and done a done a fantastic job. But like you say, Chelsea, uh, especially when we played them uh, away, they were they're definitely the best team we've played uh, this season and. They have the advantage, but like I said before, this, this league's never that straightforward. Uh, I'm sure the, the Chelsea players and the Spurs players will know that themselves and they'll be both when we're desperate to try and lift that trophy. Jags is right back on top of his game, isn't he? He is. I mean, we talk about his goals, but the most important thing for me, and I'm sure the same will be for Phil, is that he's performing at the level that we know he can play at. You know, his defensive work has been outstanding since he got back in the side. And not too many covered themselves in glory last week at West Ham, but mm. Phil was one of the better ones, it's got to be said. Needs to practice a celebration though, doesn't it? Yeah, His daughter's much. right, it was an awful cartwheel. Yeah, poor Phil, poor, but <laughs> uh, must do better. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, listen, if he can do as many cartwheels as he likes, as, as long as he keeps scoring goals, that'd be great. We have to be better than we were at the Olympic Stadium, and I'm sure we will be. Yeah, I, and we talk about it, I mean, I wasn't inspired by the place, no. just going there as a spectator, mm -hmm. you know, doing the co-coms with yourself, Daz. But, you know, so I think it, we talk about it affecting the West Ham players. I just wonder if it affected our lads as well. You know, we talked to John Joe earlier on about it and he said it just felt weird and what have you like. Pat, perhaps that was something to do with the performance. I don't know, I'm not making excuses mm -hmm. for the lads. I'm sure they wouldn't want me to, but sometimes you just get those games in a, in a, in a season where things just don't feel right and they don't click. and. You know, we could have lost the game. The good news is we didn't. We kept a clean sheet. And the positive thing is we picked up another away point. And it could be a big afternoon for Romelu Lukaku. He's the top scorer in the Premier League. They are the Premier League leaders. Over to you, Rom. Yeah, very much so. But uh, along with 10 other lads who go out there who get the honour of going out and representing the football club on, on Sunday because, you know, they're the games that you want to play in. We know Romelu on his day is up there with the best strikers in the world. And... Uh, you know, I think if we're going to win the game, we're going to need him to produce a big performance. Interesting decision to bring back Martin Stecklenberg, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, in the main, Joel's done done great. Made a mistake with his, you know, the timing of his challenge that led to the penalty. And um, perhaps the manager just felt it was a good time to give him a little rest. Bring Martin back in. He's got bags of experience, uh, and he's gone in and kept kept a clean sheet as well. Didn't have an over overly lot to do, did he? But um, you know, good for him as well. They've both had to be patient at various points of the season. Should be a great atmosphere. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I am. I mean, it's a terrific atmosphere. It always is at Goodison Park when the big big teams come in. Um, Chelsea are, are, are going to be have to be on their metal. They really are because our lads will be right up for that game, and so will our fans. Yeah, really looking forward to that one. By the way, congratulations to our under 13s who won the Premier League international tournament last weekend, beating of all teams, Chelsea in the final. Well done to those lads. Right, before we go, I'd like to remind you all that tickets for our end of season awards evening at the Royal Philharmonic Hall are now available. We've made the event accessible to as many supporters as possible this year and the tickets are moving quickly. Visit evertonfc.com for more details. And that's it for this week, a week in which Everton won the Premier League 2 title. My thanks once again to John Joe Kenny and of course to the Diamond for joining us this week. It's been a great week. We hope you enjoy your weekend and that you'll join us again next week for another Everton show.